Hi guys, it's May, and for those of you that are just starting off with your triathlon season, I've chosen a group of exercises here that will hopefully help you um, with some lower body and some upper body stuff. And maybe if you only just do one of the disciplines, like your running or your cycling or your swimming, then these exercises um, will also be helpful for that discipline. So we're going to start off with the bottom, because that's going to help you in all three of those sports. And we're going to be doing our shoulder bridge. So again, we're going to come down onto our mat. So we're going to come and lie on our back. And again, always remember just to work within your own limits. So we're going to be starting again in our neutral position and getting our bottoms to engage. So we're going to squeeze our bottoms. We're going to tip the pelvis out of neutral to flatten the back. And then we're going to pick up from the tailbone and then just continue to peel up one vertebra at a time until we're in that nice straight line through the front of the hips. And then we're going to peel back down. So each time, think about squeezing the bottom. We're going to tip that pelvis back, squeeze the bottom as we come all the way up, and then peel back down. So we exhale as we peel all the way up, inhale to hold at the top, and exhale back down. So all the while, still think about keeping the length through the back of the neck, shoulders nice and open, and really using those bottom muscles. So if you're also feeling quite a lot in your hamstrings, that's okay, because they should be working. But think about squeezing your bottom or pushing a little bit more down through your heels if you feel that your hamstrings are working maybe just that little bit too hard for you. So again, just squeezing that bottom. And if you've got like a little low stool or a box or something at home, you can pop your feet onto that and that will actually get the hamstrings to work harder. So if you do want to bias your hamstrings, which might also help you in your biking, then it's not a bad idea to do it on a raised surface as well. So we're aiming here for 10 repetitions. So we've just got two more to go here. And then we're going to challenge that a little bit more by taking one leg up towards the ceiling. So from this position, we're going to reach one leg up and then we're going to come into our straight bridge here. So we're just going to reach the bottom lower back down. So we're really pushing down through that supporting heel as we reach the opposite leg up towards the ceiling. So we should be really squeezing that bottom and again you'll probably feel that supporting hamstring working as well as the glute. Good. So keep again reaching up through the opposite leg just to try and elevate a little bit more through the pelvis. Good. So keep breathing out as we come up, in as we come back down. Good. We've got last four on this side. And then we're going to lower that leg back down. So again, just check that your pelvis is nice and level to start, reaching the opposite leg up, and again, reaching and squeezing through that bottom. If your hamstrings are tight as well, this is a good way just to think about lengthening through that opposite leg. And it's okay if the leg doesn't like go up as high as mine. Just take the leg up as high as you feel that you can and really focus still on squeezing through that supporting bottom. Good. We've got again five more just to go on this side. So pressing through that heel, lengthening away through the opposite heel. Good. Last two there. And then folding the leg back in. Good work. Okay. So we're going to roll over now and come into our swimming. And again, we're going to be working here on our um, pelvic control and our bottom muscles but also just making us aware of our upper body by bringing in the arm movements as well. So we're starting with our swimming level four. So we want to get the shoulders and the hands to be in line, as well as the knees and the hips, and just take a moment to find your neutral position. From here, we're gonna again reach through the opposite arm and leg, aiming to keep that pelvis level. So sometimes it's a good idea even to pop something on your low back, and try not to let it um, roll off because if we're moving the pelvis or rocking from side to side, then you're going to lose the object that's on your back. So again, we're going to exhale as we reach away 
and inhale to come back. Good. So all the while, still think about staying lifted through the brace bone and aiming not to also lock out the elbows as we reach away. Good. We're going to go for one more here on each side. And then we're going to change that movement slightly. So this time, again, you can either use the arms or you can leave the arms out. But we're going to be going into a sideward movement with the leg. And that's going to be working on our opposite um, bottom muscle. So this time, as we reach the arm away, we're going to take the other leg out. So again, on the diagonal. And again, if you're finding that that's challenging for the balance, then you can just take the arm movement out and just focus on that leg movement. So again, we're going to exhale as we reach. Inhale to come back. And again, depends on your movement that you have in the hip, how far you might be able to lift that hip. But we're still aiming to keep the pelvis relatively level, other than the weight shift. Good. Let's go for two more there on each side. Again, exhale as we reach. Inhale to return. And then we're going to lower back down. Good work. So we've got our third exercise now where we're going to be focusing more on the upper body, which will help us especially when we're um, on the bike. So we're going to be thinking about that shoulder blade area. So for this exercise, you're going to need your blue um, Pilates band. And we've got two options. One where we can stand on the band in a stride standing. And then the two movements are going to be a back row or our little tricep press. Or if you've got a banister or a rail or something that you can loop your band around, then we're going to just loop the, the band around that um, just to give you a little bit of resistance. So even on a door handle, that kind of thing. So again, we're going to check that we're in our parallel lines. We're going to fold forward slightly from the hips to bring the chest down. And we're going to start off just with some little back rows. So we're really focusing here on that position, as I say, that you'd be in on your bike. So also think about your neck position. So we're keeping really nice and long. We're squeezing those shoulder blades together as we pull the arms back to engage through those muscles around the shoulder blades and also keep that space between your ears and your shoulders so a little squeeze and release good so still keeping your core engaged as we're in that kind of mini squat and all the while keeping that length through the back of the neck so we're going to aim there to do our 30 little squeezes opening through the chest and allowing those shoulder blades just to glide down the back. Good. Last six here. And then we're going to change that movement into our tricep press. So again, for this one, we, you can attach your band um, onto something. Again, you can stay either in that bend position. You can do it in a stride standing position if you like as well. Um, and we're going to do a little backward movement. So keeping the elbows lifted, we've then got to extend the arms back behind you. So make sure again that we stay nice and open through the shoulders as we reach the arms away. So often on the way back is where you start to get the little shake of truth. So you'll feel that the back of those arms start to shake a little bit. Um, and that's usually just that eccentric control that we've got working through the back of the arms. So really good for toning those arms also for your little summer dresses, um, but also obviously hopefully helpful in your biking and your swimming. So just reaching away and folding back. Good. So again, keep that length through the back of the neck, shoulders drawing away from the ears as we press. Good. So again, we're going to aim there for our 30 repetitions. If you find that you're getting tired, you can always alternate from one side to the other side. Okay, so well done. That's hopefully you can feel those 
arms working. So what we're going to do now is come into a side bend and we're also going to be working our glutes. So this is kind of an all over body workout because we're getting our obliques to work on one side as well as our shoulder position and then we're going to be working through that opposite bottom. So again we're going to come down onto the mat, check your position so that your elbow and your shoulder are in line, take the feet um, a little bit further behind you, you can have a small bend again through the front of the hips because we're going to be doing our clam this time. So check that the hips and the ribs are pointing forwards and again if you find that you've got problems with your shoulder or it's too much you can just always lower back down into this position. Otherwise we're going to press up into our side bend and then from here we're going into our clam. So you can maybe pop this hand on your hip just to make sure that it doesn't roll backwards. So keeping the feet glued together, opening through that top knee. So again, working hard through the shoulder at the same time as getting that bottom activated. So again, um, exhaling to open and inhaling to lower back down. Good. And then we can have a little rest for the shoulder. So we're going to take that straight into our clam level two this time. So again, coming back into the side bend, we're going to lift the feet and then open. So this is a little bit more challenging because we've now got to balance on a really small base of support to keep the feet lifted and all the while still keeping our pelvis pointing forwards. So it's the same breathing, exhale to open, inhale to lower. Good. So we're aiming for 10 of each of these movements. So we've got the last four, three, two, and one, and then lower back down. So we've got one more in that position, and again, if you need to lower down, you can. We're coming this time into our lift and lower. So we're going to come back up, lengthen the top leg, and then we're going to lift and lower through that top leg, thinking about lengthening away through the hip so that we keep that um, leg through the underneath waist as well. Good. So make sure that top hip is not rolling backwards. Good. I can now feel my underneath bottom really working as well. Good. Last one. And coming back down. Give them a little pat if they need. Okay. So we've got to do the same on the other side. So again, just check that your shoulder and your elbow are in line. Knees a little bit bent up. And again, just a small bend through the hips ribs and hips pointing forwards and again we can bring that hand onto the waist. So again we're going to press down coming up and then opening through that top knee for our clam level one. So again exhale to open, inhale to lower back down. Good. Good. So keep that breathing going, squeeze that bottom as we open through that hip. Good, last one here. And then we can have a little mini rest for our shoulder before we take that to our level two. So this is the more tricky one for our balance. So again, we're gonna come up and if you can, we're gonna lift the bottom foot and then again, open. So same movements, opening through that top knee, keeping the hips pointing forwards, ribs still soft. Good. Exhale to open, inhale to lower back down. Good, last three, two, and final one there, lowering back down. So our last one there is gonna be our lift and lower. So again here, we're gonna reach that top leg away, coming up, and then into our top leg, lift and lower. So still working hard through that underneath shoulder, reaching the leg away, and again, really pulsing. Good. We've got four more to go. So think about lengthening away as we lift. And lower back down. Good work. Okay. So the good news is that the last exercise is a little stretch series. So we're going to be looking at some calf stretches and also some bottom stretches since they've worked hard. So for this one, we're going to come back up into our standing position and we're going to come into our stride standing. So front leg again pointing forwards, back leg out behind you 
And again, just make sure that we keep that back heel in contact with the floor. And just go as far as you can to feel that stretch in the top part of the calf. If your balance is again maybe not as good, you might want to hold onto a wall just to make sure um, that you don't topple over. So we want to hold our stretches for 30 seconds. So just keep that stretch and just reach as far as you feel that you can. And then we're going to slide the back heel in, toes still pointing forwards, and then still sitting the weight um, forwards as we come in. So try not to sit backwards because we want to get that stretch through the lower part. So this is for the ciliaceous. Um, so we'll be thinking more about sort of that Achilles area. So still keeping both knees bent and the weight forwards. Toes pointing forwards, and again we're going to hold that for our 30 seconds. So keep breathing there as well. Good, and then we're going to finish off with our pigeon stretch. So we're going to come down onto the mat for this one. And we're going to basically reach that back leg away and bring the front leg across your body. So you're going to take that knee out to the side and just sit down into the stretch. So just lengthening away, keep the shoulders down. And the more that we open that opposite hip, we should get a stretch through that bottom. And again, just keep breathing as we allow that hip to open. Also lengthen out, so we might open up through that opposite hip as well. And again, we've got our 30 second hold. Good. So we're going to switch over now to the opposite side. So coming back into our standing position, other leg forwards this time. So again, front knee um, bent, back leg straight, toes still pointing forwards, and the heel in contact with the floor. Good. So just keeping that length, shoulder still drawing down. Good. Keep breathing there. Good, then we're going to slide the back leg in, and again, send both knees forwards, keeping both knees bent this time, and again, we're going to get that stretch a little bit lower down, so closer to the foot. So as I said, remember to keep the weight forwards and both knees bent. Keep breathing. Good. Then we're going to come back down. We're going to extend that back leg away and then bring that foot across your body and we're going to sit all the way back into that stretch so again aiming to open out through this knee and we should get a good stretch in this bottom and potentially opening up your opposite hip so again keeping the shoulders nice and open and just breathe as we allow that knee to stay and fold open good excellent Brilliant work. So well done guys um, and good luck if you are entering any triathlons this season um, and I look forward to seeing you in June.